Well, hey guys, here we are again to defend once again tretinoin along with some other standard of care treatments in dermatology that have been around for a long time. Y'all have asked me to comment on Phyla Skincare and the claims they make on their website about various acne treatments, including retinoids. So we're gonna get into what they have to say, debunk some of the misinformation on their website. They claim to be the biggest acne breakthrough in 40 years. That's a pretty bold claim. We'll get into exactly how their technology works or they claim it works uh, later on in the video. But if you go on the website, it's interesting. They position their product up against the standard of care acne treatments, benzoyl peroxide, antibiotics, and retinoids. And here's what they have to say about benzoyl peroxide, a form of bleach that produces dangerous free radicals which damage the skin and activate aging pathways in skin cells. That's a really scary sounding statement. Yes, there is truth embedded in that, but the way they word it, it really is set up to make you terrified of benzoyl peroxide. What is benzoyl peroxide? It is an acne treatment which destroys bacterial cell walls, killing them. And so it's thought to work in acne partially because it destroys the acne causing bacterium, cutibacterium acnes. Now, another benefit of benzoyl Benzoyl peroxide is that it helps with breaking up and the shedding of skin cells that are stuck together and breaking up of clogged pores. So it's comedolytic, which is really helpful for acne. Of course, it's not completely perfect and there are some limitations. Number one is probably the most common and that is tolerability. Namely, it can be pretty irritating to the skin, leading to redness, peeling, dryness, symptoms of stinging and sensitivity. That tends to be more common at higher concentrations of benzoyl peroxide and it tends to get better with ongoing use of benzoyl peroxide. The other concern around benzoyl peroxide has always been this question of, does it make the skin more sensitive to the sun? Is it photosensitizing? Truthfully, the research looking exactly at that is mixed. Suffice it to say, the FDA cautions consumers that they should avoid unnecessary sun exposure while using benzoyl peroxide, and they should always wear a sunscreen and exercise sun protective behaviors when going outdoors. The other issue around benzoyl peroxide is yes, it does create free radicals, that's part of how it works. Now, because it does create free radicals that not only could damage bacterial cell walls, but had the potential to damage proteins and lipids in your skin, there's always been this overarching question of does use of benzoyl peroxide prematurely age the skin? Truthfully, we don't have any evidence that that actually happens. It's definitely a theoretical possibility, but the research that we have does not support that this occurs. And remember, this has been an acne treatment for over 60 years, and we don't have any evidence that that happens. Of course, benzoyl peroxide, as I mentioned, can be pretty drying, especially in the beginning. That can make the signs of skin aging more obvious. When the skin is dry and irritated, wrinkles and fine lines, they're a lot more obvious. The other issue around benzoyl peroxide is that it can cause a contact dermatitis. There are two types of contact dermatitis, irritant contact dermatitis in which an ingredient is simply just super irritating and allergic contact dermatitis, a dermatitis in which your body is actually allergic to the ingredient and you develop a rash whenever you come in contact with it. Of those two, irritant contact dermatitis is far more common with benzoyl peroxide. Allergic contact dermatitis, true allergy to benzoyl peroxide is actually not that common. Anywhere from 0.2% to 1% rates of allergic contact dermatitis to benzoyl peroxide itself. The other overriding concern or question is, well, if benzoyl peroxide is targeting bacteria, couldn't it also affect other bacteria on our skin surface that are important for our skin microbiome? That certainly is a possibility um, that with long-term uninterrupted use, in theory, you might make the argument that it could be disruptive to your skin microbiome. But we don't, again, have evidence that that actually happens. Is there any evidence that benzoyl peroxide ages your skin? In short, no. Theoretically, it's possible, but the overwhelming clinical body of experience does not suggest that that actually happens. Importantly, benzoyl peroxide is part of the evidence-based treatment guidelines put out by the American Academy of Dermatology and the Global Alliance for Improved outcomes in acne as part of the first line treatment for acne regardless of severity. So my problem is that they position a well-researched 
evidence-based, effective, first-line acne treatment that is also affordable, they position it in such a way so as to make it sound scary and harmful to the skin. They position it that way so as to make their product sound more attractive. Here's what they have to say about antibiotics. Antibiotics cause antimicrobial resistance and an endless cycle of relapses. Antibiotic resistance is a major issue when it comes to acne treatment. I mean, worldwide, antibiotic resistance is certainly of concern. When antibiotics are used too frequently, you run the risk that the bacteria become resistant to them, creating superbug strains. And that definitely is a problem. For this reason, antibiotics that are used in the treatment of acne, which include both topical antibiotics like clindamycin and erythromycin, as well as oral antibiotics like doxycycline and minocycline, we use these primarily actually for their anti-inflammatory effects. And the goal is to only use them for a very limited duration because they are pretty effective actually at clearing up the acne quickly. And that can be beneficial for reducing the risk that the person goes on to develop scars. It's not, however, something that we ever aim to keep the person on indefinitely because, of course, of the risk of antibiotic resistance. It's definitely an issue and it can contribute to treatment failure, but prolonged courses of antibiotics are not the goal of acne management. And when used under the direction and supervision of your treating dermatologist, this should not be an issue. It should be limited. Furthermore, the American Academy of Dermatology and the Global Alliance for Improved Outcomes in Acne, their treatment guidelines actually suggest benzoyl peroxide as a first line treatment because benzoyl peroxide, while it kills off the acne causing bacteria, see acnes like, like an antibiotic would, there's no evidence or risk of bacterial resistance to benzoyl peroxide. Furthermore, in the case where antibiotics are needed, using them alongside benzoyl peroxide reduces the risk that resistant organisms will emerge. And moving on to what they have to say about retinoids. Retinoids, they claim, accelerate the production of new skin cells and result in your skin aging faster. Oh boy, this could not be further from the truth. Uh, we have a lot of research clearly demonstrating that tretinoin actually helps to minimize and improve signs of skin aging. And it also helps to uh, mitigate the damage to the skin from UV by suppressing enzymes that destroy the supportive framework of the skin. So if anything, we have a body of research to suggest the opposite of what they're saying here, that it actually improves skin aging, not worsens it. What they're getting at is the concept of the Hayflick limit, which is this idea that cells have a limited number of cell divisions before they are no more. And so by increasing cell division, you are increasing skin aging. However, the Hayflick limit, which has to do with um, something called telomeres on, on the ends of your DNA, the Hayflick limit does not apply to stem cells. Stem cells are much different than differentiated cells. Stem cells reside in the bottom layer of the epidermis known as the stratum basal, as well as within the hair follicle, and they function to ensure the maintenance of skin homeostasis and regeneration. So you don't run out of skin, the skin doesn't age faster just by increasing cell turnover because of that population of stem cells down there. Furthermore, if the Hayflick limit applied to your skin, basically anything that scraped the skin, rubbed up against the skin, could then cause the skin to age more quickly. Something as simple as bathing, washing your face, shaving your face or your legs. You would expect if the Hayflick limit applied that you would be rapidly aging the skin. And that's just not the case. There's a stem cell population there that renews and replenishes. And the Hayflick limit does not apply to those. Anyone telling you that retinoids damage the skin by increasing skin cell turnover and thinning it, they don't understand the biology of the epidermis. So retinoid usage will not make your skin age faster. And to reiterate concepts from last week's video, there is zero evidence with over 50 years of at least tretinoin use that 
retinoids cause any kind of damage to the fat or fat loss. I think people fail to realize how many patients a day the average dermatologist sees. And so if there was evidence that this happened, we would be seeing it in real time in real patients. The average dermatologist is seeing at minimum like 30 to 40 patients a day. Tretinoin is commonly prescribed not just for acne, but for a wide array of different skin conditions. And this has never been reported. Standard of care acne treatments that are evidence-based have been used for a long time. We know how they work. Yes, antibiotics pose a threat for superbug formation, antibiotic resistance. That's why we limit their use and we use them alongside benzoyl peroxide. Um, but the way they position standard of care acne treatments in such a malignant fashion um, and then pose it next to theirs, it just kind of directs the shopper's attention to theirs almost as if it's some safer alternative because it is, as they put it, it's the biggest acne breakthrough in 40 years. Here's the other problem with this website. They say the real problem is bacterial overgrowth. Mm, that is a part of acne, but it's not the only part. You also have hyperproliferation of the pore lining with comedone formation. You have increased sebum production as it relates largely to hormonal signaling and genetics. And then you also have inflammation in the skin. Acne is a multifactorial disease, so it's not just related to cutie bacterium acnes, but their phrasing here makes it seem as though it is. Why? Well, because their product targets the bacteria in the skin. It doesn't target the other factors that play a key role in acne pathogenesis. Then they go on to say that traditional acne products kill both good and bad bacteria, leaving your skin dry and damaged. But that's not entirely true. Retinoids do not kill bacteria and they are a traditional acne treatment. What exactly is Phyllis Skin Care all about? Well, they use bacteriophages that target uh, the acne-causing bacterium, cutie bacterium acne. What the heck is a bacteriophage? Well, a bacteriophage is a virus that specifically hits bacteria and can possibly kill them. How does this work? Well, bacteriophages bind to receptors on the surface of bacteria, and then they insert uh, their genetic material into the bacteria. And depending on the type of bacteriophage and its life cycle, they can lead to something called a lytic infection in which basically a lot of new little bacteriophages are made within the bacteria itself and that causes the bacteria to lyse, to break open and die, release more bacteriophages that could subsequently go on to target other bacteria. Bacteriophages are actually specific to certain bacteria. So it's not as though the phage is going to infect all bacteria on your skin surface. Cutie bacterium acne bacteriophages were first identified in the 60s and they're a really interesting concept and in an area of active research in acne treatment. They're attractive as an alternative to antibiotics that in theory should not put the person at risk for not only antibiotic resistance, but potentially at risk for disruption in the skin microbiome. So if the bacteriophage targets cutie bacterium acnes, is it possible that cutie bacterium acnes could develop resistance to the bacteriophages? Theoretically, it is possible, but much, much lower than using antibiotics. So a really cool concept and a really cool idea. The other concern you might have though, in terms of the skin microbiome is, believe it or not, cutie bacterium acnes, it's part of your skin microbiome. So going overboard with killing it may not necessarily be the best approach to acne either. In theory here, the way that this system works is that the bacteriophage is going to basically infect uh, the acne causing bacteria destroy it and then in destroying it release more bacteriophages that are going to go on to infect neighboring cutie bacterium acnes destroying those. So you may get kind of in theory you could get total elimination of cutie bacterium acnes if this really does work and is that necessarily a good thing? Yes it is part of acne pathogenesis but it's also part of your skin microbiome. So how is that subsequently going to negatively impact the health of your skin microbiome? So what about phyla and their bacteriophage system? So they did a, a clinical study they took 90 subjects aged 12 to 35 years of age, both men and women, and they had them use their system for eight weeks. They either used their, their product, their serum, or they used a placebo. 
And by placebo, I mean a product that didn't have the bacteriophage in it. Now, after the eight weeks, they showed that the group getting the bacteriophage containing product, they showed an overall improvement in the investigator global assessment, as opposed to the placebo group. They also claim that there was a reduction in QD bacterium acnes in the group getting the phage containing serum up to 90% reduction in QD bacterium acne. So they associate the reduction in QD bacterium acnes with the investigator global assessment improvements that they saw compared to placebo. Then they did a follow-up questionnaire and 87% said that they would recommend the product to someone else. 80% said they were satisfied and 70% said they noticed an improvement in their skin. And importantly, there were no adverse side effects noted in the eight weeks of this study. Another thing they claimed their study showed is that there was an increase in overall skin microbial diversity in the group getting the bacteriophage serum compared to placebo. This is their study, but we're not privy to all the details as to how this study was conducted. I have questions for which there are not answers because this is not something that is publicly available. It's not a peer reviewed study. It's not like you can go on PubMed and find this. This is their study. How did they determine the reduction in cutie bacterium acne. Did they just take a swab? Did they take skin biopsies? We don't have information on that. Like how did they determine the reduction in cutie bacterium acne? Because there are flaws with certain methodologic approaches. We should know about what they're using. How did they determine microbial diversity? There's also no information given to us on the subjects themselves. How long had they had acne? What other treatments had they tried? I noticed that uh, they include women of a variety of ages. Were any of these women previously on hormonal birth control pills, which could affect sebum? Were any of these women previously pregnant or contemplating pregnancy? What proportion of the subjects who were enrolled in this study had been using either oral or topical antibiotics previously? That's super important. And if they had, was there a washout period? Because as you can imagine, if they had the subjects come in and stop all things that they were using, but they had previously been using an antibiotic, well, after stopping the antibiotic, one might expect their microbial diversity to increase. And they only look at eight weeks. So what's the relapse rate like? Do you have to continue using this serum? And with ongoing use, is there any risk of phage resistance, meaning the cutie bacterium acnes on your skin can it become resistant to this bacteriophage in their product? That is definitely an important thing to, to keep researching. We need more long-term studies on this. They claim a 90% reduction in cutie bacterium acnes on the skin. What is the impact of that for the overall microbiome long-term? They only look up to eight weeks. The other thing that's interesting and noteworthy is that they position their product up against some competitors in the industry like Clean and Clear, and they say that there are no acne relapses with their, with their serum. But did they actually test for that? Like they look at eight weeks. Relapses can occur after stopping something. So maybe the benefit of this product is sustained for six weeks, but maybe you'll get a relapse if you stop. Here's what I have to say about Phyla. I have a huge problem with the marketing on their website and the claims that they make about well-established, evidence-based, effective, acne treatments, including benzoyl peroxide, including antibiotics, and including retinoids, all of which are not without risks, not without problems. They all can have their own separate issues, but framing them in a way that makes them sound harmful to the skin while simultaneously making your product sound safe and effective, it's very misleading. Furthermore, while bacteriophages are an area of ongoing, exciting, active research in terms of therapeutics for acne, there's still a lot that needs to be done to figure out how effective this is, what tweaks need to be made. So I'm suspicious of their claims around their product and I'd like to see more long-term research on bacteriophages for acne management in general, let alone their product. I'd like to see their product in a clinical trial that's actually published in a peer-reviewed journal before I would go buying any of the claims that they make. The other thing about the, the bacteriophage too, in theory, like you have to imagine that when you lice open bacteria like that, you can be releasing um, bacterial components that generate a pretty significant inflammatory response that in theory could really worsen acne in the beginning. Um, so I, you know, I would really like to see more clinical trials, more clinical studies on this type of uh, approach for acne before for really, I mean, you just can't predict how this is gonna go. I suspect some people possibly, you know, as the study showed, did in fact show improvement. 
but could people possibly get much worse in the beginning at least? Uh, yeah, it definitely seems like a, a reasonable possibility. More research is needed. Anyway, y'all, that's a wrap up on Phyla skincare and their claims about evidence-based acne treatments. Did not like that part of it. Let me know in the comments though if you have tried this product, um, if you've ever heard of it. Uh, I hope this video was helpful and informative. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.